The Stanley Motor Carriage Company was an American manufacturer of steam engine vehicles. It operated from 1902 to 1924. The cars made by the company were colloquially called Stanley Steamers, although several different models were produced. Topic: <laughs> Early History. Twins Francis E. Stanley (1849–1918) and Freelan O. Stanley (1849–1940) founded the company after selling their photographic dry plate business to Eastman Kodak. They made their first car in 1897. During 1898 and 1899, they produced and sold over 200 cars, more than any other U.S. maker. In 1899, Freeland and his wife Flora drove one of their cars to the top of Mount Washington in New Hampshire, the highest peak in the northeastern United States. The ascent took more than two hours and was notable as being the first time a car had climbed the 7.6 miles .2 kilometers long Mount Washington carriage road. The descent was accomplished by putting the engine in low gear and braking extensively. The Stanleys later sold the rights to this early design to Locomobile, and in 1902 they formed their own Stanley Motor Carriage Company. Topic: <laughs> Specifications and design. Early Stanley cars had light wooden bodies mounted on tubular steel frames by means of full elliptic springs. Steam was generated in a vertical fire tube boiler, mounted beneath the seat, with a vaporizing gasoline later, kerosene burner underneath. The boiler was reinforced by several layers of piano wire wound around it, which gave it a strong but relatively lightweight shell. In early models, the vertical fire tubes were made of copper, and were expanded into holes in the upper and lower crown sheets. In later models, the installation of a condenser caused oil fouling in the expansion joints, and welded steel fire tubes had to be used. The boilers were reasonably safe, since they were fitted with safety valves. Even if these failed, any dangerous overpressure would rupture one of the joints long before the boiler shell itself could burst. The resulting leakage would relieve the boiler pressure and douse the burner, with very little risk to the passenger. There is not a single documented incident of a Stanley boiler exploding. One, two, the engine had two double acting cylinders, side by side and equipped with slide valves, and it was a simple expansion type. Drive was transmitted directly by the crankshaft to a rear mounted differential through using a chain. Owners often modified their locomobiles by adding third party accessories, including improved lubricators, condensers, and devices which eased the laborious starting procedure. To overcome patent difficulties with the design they had sold to Locomobile, the Stanley brothers developed a new model with twin-cylinder engines geared directly to the rear axle. Later models had aluminium coachwork that resembled the internal combustion cars of the time, but they retained steam car features by having no transmission, clutch, or driveshaft. They also had a fully sprung tubular steel frame. When they later moved the steam boiler to the front of the vehicle, the owners dubbed it the coffin nose. The compact engine ran at considerable steam pressure, with the 10 horsepower (7.5 kilowatts) boiler described in 1912 at having the safety valve set at 650 pounds per square inch (4.5 megapascals), with the burner set to automatically cut back when pressure reached 500 pounds per square inch (3.4 megapascals). The twin-cylinder steam engines were at that time 10 horsepower, with 3 and a quarter inch (83 mm bore and 4 and a quarter inch (108 mm stroke, and 20 horsepower (15 kilowatts) with 4 inch (102 mm bore and 5 inch (127 mm stroke, and made extensive use of ball bearings. In order to improve range, condensers were added from 1915. A Stanley steamer set the world record for the fastest mile in an automobile 28.2 seconds in 1906. This record 127 miles per hour or 204 kilometers per hour was not broken by any automobile until 1911, although Glenn Curtis beat the record in 1907 with a V8-powered motorcycle at 136 miles per hour 219 kilometers per hour. The record for steam-powered automobiles was not broken until 2009. Production rose to 500 cars in 1917. The Stanley Steamer was sometimes nicknamed the Flying Teapot. At least one Stanley Steamer found its way to Castle Hill, New South Wales, Australia, where it was driven in the late 1920s. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Obsolescence. 
During the mid to late 1910s, the fuel efficiency and power delivery of internal combustion engines improved dramatically and using an electric starter instead of the crank, which had been notorious for injuring its operators, led to the rise of the gasoline-powered automobile, which also was much cheaper. The Stanley Company produced a series of advertising campaigns trying to recover the car buying public away from the "...internal explosion engine", but it was unsuccessful. Their advertising slogan was power, correctly generated, correctly controlled, correctly applied to the rear axle." These were early examples of the fear, uncertainty and doubt advertising campaign, since their aim was not to convince buyers of the advantages of the Stanley steamer but to suggest that internal combustion automobiles could explode. <laughs> Sale and closure In 1918, after Francis Stanley's accidental death, Freeland Stanley sold his interests to Prescott Warren. The company suffered a period of decline and technological stagnation. Production specifications show three that no model with a power output of more than 20 horsepower 15 kilowatts was produced after 1918. Better cars were now available at much lower cost. For example, a 1924 Stanley 740D sedan cost $3,950, $56,497 today, compared to less than $500, $7,151 today. For a Ford Model T, the widespread use of electric starters in internal combustion cars, beginning in 1912, eroded the remaining technological advantages of the steam car. The smaller scale of merchandising, a lack of effective advertising, and the general desire of motorists for higher speeds and faster starting than offered by Stanley vehicles were the primary causes of the company's demise. The factory closed permanently in 1924. In popular culture An entire song entitled, The Stanley Steamer appears in the 1948 film Summer Holiday starring Mickey Rooney and Gloria de Haven. The number, written by Harry Warren with lyrics by Ralph Blaine, features an extended musical sequence with what appears to be a fairly early yellow 10 HP model. Another Stanley Steamer appears in the 1965 film The Great Race starring Jack Lemmon, Tony Curtis and Natalie Wood as the driver of the car. A Stanley Steamer appears in the 2003 film, Seabiscuit. Stanley from Cars and Cars 2 who appeared in Time Travel Mater is a Stanley Steamer. He was the husband of Lizzie. There is a statue of him that is seen in front of the fire station in Radiator Springs where Red lives. He was the town's founder. <laughs> Gallery Topic See also Freeland Oscar Stanley and Francis Edgar Stanley John Brisbane Walker Amsey L. Barber Locomobile Company of America Mobile Company of America Steam car Steam engine Timeline of steam power History of steam road vehicles Topic Notes Carrot Stanley technical information Carrot Stanley production specs Carrot Friends of Auburn Heights Preserve, FAQ Topic. External links Stanley Steamers Museum web page on the Stanley Steamers in Kingfield, Maine Stanley Steamer, technical information World's largest active collection of Stanley Steamers Stanley Register Online, worldwide register of existing Stanley Steam cars British Steam Car Challenge 2008 Videos, Stanley Steamers Driven and Explained by Jay Leno